what's good y'all and welcome to my review of this week's episode of Hero Walk Season 6. Holy mother! This episode was fucking amazing. It had everything. You had the action. You had the character develop Mako. You had some Uraraka screen time, which is always a plus. And of course, you had the blow. The gore, I should say, of Aizawa chopping his goddamn leg. Somebody call up Stark Industries. My man needs replacement. <laughs> yeah, man. This episode was incredible. Um, I think I will end up doing the discussion video like I was like I was alluding at to last week, and you guys will see this, of course, my reaction as well. But yeah, I think also I think I'll keep a lot of myself with the Bakko uh, situation about the Bakko episode part of the episode for that for that discussion video. Although I often mentioned a bit we talked about here, but I'll probably go into a bit more detail uh, once I get to that discussion video, and probably also once I see Chibi's review, which hopefully uploads. But yeah, uh, as always, guys, you guys may know Survivor Series is tonight, so as always, hopefully I'll get the the audio done for the recording before the show starts. But yeah, the review ends up taking a long time, a long longer to come out. You guys know why, but anyway, enough jibba jabba. Let's just jump right in, boys. So we start it off right where we left off last week with Shigaraki throwing the cord bullets at Ayazawa. Now, y'all remember last week I had lost my goddamn mind over that scene. Well, I once again lost my collective shit over this. So this, so Ayazawa switches the side of his sword and says, "Thanks, you, thanks, Ryuki. Now I can act without hesitation, logically." To deal with this, and as he said that we get these hand, we get these a couple shots of Airy with, I'm assuming Mario or no 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 that's Izuku right there because of the scars on his head. I'm pretty sure that's Izuku. She's like playing with like this like like yarn with. I'm pretty sure that's Izuku because of the scars. That like, could just still be Mirko, but I'm pretty sure that is Izuku, which I thought was nice. Such as this dude chops off his fucking leg. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Ayazawa, to make sure that the court bullet doesn't spread like it's a fucking zombie movie, he just chops his leg off. Bro, when I saw this shit, I lost my goddamn mind. Y'all will see this in the reaction. Most likely tomorrow was when that will probably be dropping tomorrow. But bro, 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 I lost my shit as when I saw eyes. I would just chop his leg off, bro. I mean, I'm like, bro, ain't that a little extreme? But to be fair, in this situation, that's kind of what you had to do, bro. Either that or lose your quirk, bro. So fuck your legs. You can always get a new one, I guess. So like I said, something call up Stark Industries. My man needs a replacement. <laughs> anyway, after that shocking opening, to say the very least, ladies and gentlemen, we're back with Shigaraki. He says, man, you really are a cool arranger. But even so, for an instant, you were distracted. And then we see him just jump. like We see like a gust of wind, and as Shigaraki and Izuku go back up into the air, Shigaraki goes, where Sh Shigaraki comes charging towards Izuku. And like, bro, the, the facial expression this man does, like, there's actually this one shot that I'm pretty sure is going to get beamed to shit. Uh, I saw it posted by Shonen, Shonen Leaks on his Twitter, but <laughs> it's also a very Spider-Man kind of like pose with his leg, but like his, but like with his mouth over, bro. Like, this will probably, this shot of Shigaraki will probably Probably get, we'll probably get me anyway. So as he's coming, as he's coming headlong towards Izuku, uh, um, Todoroki comes in there, manages to grab Shigaraki, basically throws him through some of his ice. As he as Izuku comes charging in there and then punches him right in the ribs and right up. And Shigaraki, of course, still standing. We then head back over to uh, Ida and Sue. Ida is, is, is worried that he still hasn't been able to reach Bakugo, and now he can't reach anybody. Obviously, we know this is because of Shigaraki's quirk. They like disabled all their communications. Sue, uh, Sue echoes a second that's probably just some quirk that's uh, disabling communications. Best Girl finally makes her appearance, which is always a plus. I see this every time. No matter how small screen time is, whenever Best Girl is, has screen time, it is a good day, ladies and gentlemen. It is a good motherfucker. So then, I, so then, Ida actually overhears these two uh, civilians. Some like, "Oh, what is this country coming to?" And then that's when and he tells him to turn up his phone. And that's when we find out a news report, basically of Makia's destruction as he reaches back to I think we're in ja if I remember correctly, we're in Jaku City. Um, as he's just and he's just burning through and he's just going through and just destroying all these cities. The reporter says that hey, if anyone that lives in these cities go up north, and he and he mentions cities like uh, Mount Gugan uh, to to Jaku City. The predicted path is from Mino City. Uh, Kaku City, uh, Neba, Neba, Nebaro City, if I pronounce that right, Hondo City, uh, there's a few, uh, Mosu City, and a bunch of other ones. 
He just keeps listing off cities of uh, people that think that should evacuate. And obviously both Eden and Uderak are shocked by this news. And Uderak mentions how all the key, almost all the heroes are here for the operation. We then actually see some shots of Machia's destruction as he burns, as he just destroys these cities. Very much like a very much like it's come, very much comes off like a disaster movie, like Cloverfield or something, man. It, it was honestly it was honestly pretty shocking, man. We then head over back with the rest of the class of the class A and class B students, and they're obviously just as shocked and horrified as we were seeing the destruction unfold. Uh, Saro says that he hopes Tokoyami is okay. We then head over to Tokoyami, where we see him, like, where we see also the little, like, hospital area they set up there. Also got completely destroyed by Mafia as he, as, uh, during, throughout his path trip, but at the very least, Hawks has been bandaged up, so... You know, that's a plus, I guess. We are then back with Momo. She says that even though they meticulously planned and, you know, and Kirishima succeeded, that the reason they're here, the reason why they're unharmed, was because they weren't even recognized as an enemy. Which, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they did, if, if, if they if they weren't. Because with how big the League of Villains has gotten as the Paranormal Liberation Front, they'd be like, yeah, yeah, UA, oh, that's so yesterday. You know what I mean, man? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. Now... Obviously, and we also see uh, that the hero that looks like the, the hero that looks like the scarecrow, just like he managed to get uh, Momo and the others out with like his little like um, circle circle things, and manages to get them back to safety. While of course everyone else fights against Makia, and looks like they all got their asses handed to him. Anyway, one thing, and I also got to say, I, the storyboards in this episode and the key animation, fantastic as always, bro. Like I love Momo's face. The the face looks spread throughout this entire episode. Were easily some of the best we've seen in the entire series of the anime. So shout out to all the animators that worked on this episode, and of course the storyboard artists. Anyway, as I was saying, now there is two things we can think about what happened with Maki and the fact that why the sentence did not work. Now there's two. Now there's two theories on, on what happened. With it. Either A, it is entertaining. It's going to take its sweet ass time to uh, take its effects, and there's a good chance that by the time I wouldn't be surprised. I see two ways of this playing out. Either Makia gets to Jaku City, you know, he's raging in there with the League in tow, and then maybe right as he's about to do some deliver some, uh, some huge attack, or maybe right or maybe right as he enters the city, he like falls, that's when the set is finally work, and he falls asleep. Or, because there was only one of the jars that went through, rather than multiple ones, and given how fucking big this dude is, there's a good chance it just wasn't enough for it to take any real effect. Now, maybe it slows him down a little bit, but that, but that's it. Personally... With how dark this, with how dark this arc has been, it's probably the second option. But I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up being the first option, and then like the, and then like at the very last moment, that's when it finally kicks in there and he falls asleep. We'll have to wait and see on that. But it seems like it just didn't work because you know the dude's like 20 feet tall, and they only put one of those little jars in there. Like there's a reason ele ele elephant tranquilizers are a thing, you know, to take down elephants because they're fucking huge. So. I don't know, but anyway, we don't even know how strong these were. Were these were these were they as strong or stronger than the elephant tranquilizers? Who the hell knows? Whatever the case may be, it doesn't seem to work. But we'll have to wait and see if it actually didn't, or if it's just taking its sweet ass time to to take effects. And then of course this is when the mushroom chick has like, oh hey, you know, shouldn't that shouldn't the uh, the anesthetics take, take take effect by now? And so after we see more destruction from Makia, once again, another amazing storyboard with his with his arm fully extended out there. Like I said, the storyboards this episode were fantastic, man. Then we get back to Garaki, and bro, Garaki, man, yo, this man talking his shit, bro. Like, I'm like, this man is Loki just rubbing it in here. This is the fifth man that knows he's one, bro. Like, bro, the, the this man, Maki Gar Garaki, man, is easily probably one of my favorite villain characters here, Waka, because he is just so despicable not only did of course you have that shit with Ayazawa's friend with Ayazawa present Mike's friend and turning him into Kono Gary which by the way for some of the shit I've been seeing from cover pages looks like he's gonna be coming back soon so that's gonna be interesting when we get on the end against that at least from what I've seen for cover pages I've been seeing some cover pages of the manga recently and looks like we might be seeing more of it but we'll have to wait and see on that I'm not I'm not gonna get any more than that and also because I just don't know anymore but yeah so, we might see more of him soon, but that should be interesting. Anyway, anyway, I'm getting off topic. So, this, like I said, this man is just talking to him, like, oh, he came? It's true, the raid of the hospital was a total sudden. As expected, he was, it was splendid. And then, bro, you can see President Mike, this man just wants to straight up kill him. <laughs> he wants to snap his neck like he's fucking Zom, bro. <laughs> but, 
<laughs> but then he just starts rubbing in. But just one move, Shigaraki Wigan. Just one move has turned the tables. And yo, yo, bro, bro, shout outs to his Japanese VA, bro. Shout out to that man because his laugh was oh, chef's kiss. I love this man's lab when he around this part of the episode, man. Fantastic. I cannot wait to hear this with the dub cast, man. It's gonna be fucking awesome, bro. But that lab, bro, that lab gotta be one of the most evil laps I've ever heard, bro. So once again, shout outs to Garaki's Japanese VA, man. He fucking killed in this episode. So he continues on to now Maki is on the move. You can't escape destruction. Shigaraki will destroy the human saying the human saturated society. Then we get back, of course, with Shigaraki Izuku, and the other than, like I said, my boy Izuku is filled with rage. This man is now out, out for blood. Well, not just quite yet. We'll get there in a minute. Anyway, we're back with Endeavor. He's obviously resting up. He's out of breath. Uh, Todoroki comes in there, uses his ice to cool him down a little bit, tells him to cat cold your body. It should help you catch your breath at least. It only, it's, Endeavor only stays in there for like maybe two seconds before he starts melting the ice and like, you know, is back with the flames and everything. So then, and then of course, then we get back to Izuku with Ayazawa as they're trying to like, as they're trying to like st close the, close, you know, stop the bleeding and put pressure on everything. They're trying to use his bound binding cloth, but of course, because Ayazawa's basically the only one that'll actually use this thing, maybe besides uh, Shinso, the, obviously his uh, manual is like, is struggling to get the shit off of him. <laughs> <laughs> but then, bruh, 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 Oh, the scene, oh, the following scene, oh my god, I, I, I can't wait, bruh, bruh, bruh. So, after all this, Deadlock tells, I'm pretty sure this is what, how it goes, because it's kind of hard with the subtitles. Deadlock, I'm pretty sure, tells him to run, and Izuku says, no way, and then you see Izuku's face. Bruh, my boy! And yo, it also sounds like, like Izuku changed his voice up, like, completely in this scene. Which, you guys know, I mentioned this countless times in the reviews, and, you know, and I mentioned this in you guys' see in my reactions, that I overall prefer the, the dub, the English dub, if you walk over the Japanese cast. You guys know that I mentioned this countless times in the reviews. I was watching the show be the same. But some of those will know whenever those are things. You guys know me. But, bro, I have to give, I have to, I have to tip my hat. I have to tip my Lakers snapback to Izuku's Japanese VA, bro. His, oh my god, his performance here. Oh, bro, bro. As y'all can see, I'm excited. I'm losing my goddamn mind, bro. This shit was awesome. But, bro, yo, shout out to Izuku's Japanese VA. His voice when he said, no way, bro. Like, he, like I said, Izuku, like, completely changed up. It sounded like Izuku completely changed up his voice. Sounded kind of monstrous, bro. Oh, it was awesome, bro. This episode was, this episode was insane. So, right as Shigaraki is about to, like, put his hand on the ground, probably destroy the rest of the remaining of the city, this giant slash appears across his chest, which at first, I thought this was what Izuku accidentally waking one of his eight corpses like, but we see that Shigaraki and Izuku are more alike than we originally think. And I love the fact that they cut from uh, Shigaraki's, like, massive, like, gash or, like, injury around across his chest and cuts to a close-up of Izuku's injured arm when he hits Shigaraki with 100% one front, which apparently uh, was different in the how it was in the anime compared to the manga, because actually some, some people were posting the manga panel version of it, where in the manga panel, it was more like Izuku broke his jaw, while in the manga, it seems like more like Shigaraki just, like, caught his, like, caught his, caught his, caught his arm in, like, his mouth, though. Yeah, that was kind of interesting to see, you know, so. But then again, both could always change that up and maybe make it more like the blue, like the manga version when the Blu-rays come out. But we'll have to wait and see on that anyway. Anyway, Izuku no Izuku notices that his body that his body is also uh, sustaining injuries like he used to. Shigaraki says that he that he has put that he put that his, that he was using his quirk and he put a burden on his body and as he pushed past his physical limits and for some reason his super recovery quirk isn't working anymore. Now this is something when someone sees something in entry. I mean, it's right after he says, "Right now I shouldn't have to leave." He's like, "Wait." What day is it? Like it's a fuck like it's like like the opening return we're like, what day is it? What year? You know? And he's like, what and, and he's like and he's like it's been four months already. And if you have to pay attention to the background of the episode, because it cuts back back, it's because it's like a, a cuts back to Izuku Baku to Izuku Manual and Deadlock, you can see Shigaraki, at least how it looks like. Like Shigaraki's still looking around, like he doesn't know where the hell he is. Now this I find very interesting on what this could be in the future of the series. Could it be that with all the quirks he now has, and of course all for one is in his head, could he be have, having some maybe some memory loss issues? Could he maybe be switched? And from what we see at the end of the episode, could we end up seeing maybe switching personalities between Shigaraki? I don't know. I just find that kind of interesting that Shigaraki all of a sudden just forgot what day it is and acts like he like he like he like he just like switched personalities or something, which. Yeah, that I found it very interesting on whether this could leave. I don't know if this will ever get brought up again or not, but for now, I find that very interesting to see, curious to know where that's going to leave. Anyway, 
As I mentioned, Izuku notices that Shigeru is Izuku notices and bro, once again, my man's face with tears down his eyes as he's just staring at Shigaraki, bro. Uh, once again, shout out to the storyboard artist, shout out to the key animators, bro. All of y'all fucking killed it, bro. All of y'all killed it. And Izuku comments that the vessel for that great amount of power, his body isn't strong enough. He's just like me, for real. He doesn't say all like that, but he does say he's just like me. And he says, oh well, super recovery is gone. And he jumps, and Izuku, and he jumps right, or Izuku stops him from using his decay and takes he takes Shigaraki up into the air with black. This is when we learn that Izuku has learned how to fly. <laughs> I believe I can touch the sky. <laughs> how to do it, man. But yeah, Izuku's finally learned flow, which honestly, bro, I completely forgot. This is a good fun funny story. I completely forgot that Izuku and at the end of season five, which all might teaching Izuku to learn how to flow, to fly, basically, like his master was. I only remember that because Toonami is airing the last few episodes of season five, which it's see which they've also just wrapped up. Still no confirmation on what's gonna be replacing it. Some people assume that we might actually be getting Hero Walker season six instead that uh, next week or yeah, next week. By the way, see on that. I personally still think it's probably gonna be Bleach because you know Crunchyroll doesn't want to play doesn't want to play well tonight. But hey, if it's season six, fantastic, great. I'll I'll, I'll be I can't wait to watch the rest of season six on Toonami, man. So that's gonna be awesome. Anyway, he learns how they finally get him up to foot. And I love the kanji that they put up when he says like it was like like um it was like the seventh, one for all seventh user. I love it was like multiple colors and everything. It looked really it honestly just looked really fucking nice, man. I thought it was really fucking cool. So Izuku comes charging in towards Shigaraki where he starts to lose, but he starts to like lose control of Black Whip. He puts everybody down before Izuku and Bach, before Izuku and Shigaraki just start just start teeing off each other, just punching each other like it's a goddamn fucking DBZ fight, you know. <laughs> as soon as I saw the shot, Bach was looking up at them and you see like the shock waves. I was like, bro, this is just like something ripped right out of Dragon Ball, man. Anyway, that's when we cut over to a flashback uh, to, a, I'm assuming, around winter season five-ish time when Izuku and Bakugo were training. Now, before we begin talking about, you know, the training, everything, we gotta talk, we have to discuss Vesco. We gotta talk about Vesco, man. I fucking love Uraraka when she has her hair up, bro. Oh my god, it's so cute. And I also kind of prefer that over her, now the way, over her, like, normal hairstyle. I now, I never, I always wonder where this originated from, this hairstyle of Uraraka had her hair up, because I would always see it in fan art, but I never saw it in the real series, and I don't know if that was, be, if that, if that was, like, showed up before, and, like, maybe one of the manga color pages beforehand, or something else, but I'm pretty sure we'd never seen Uraraka wear her hair like that before this in the anime. I don't even know if this chapter of the manga was even out before this, because... Most of the time, I found out was like a few years ago. But I just gotta say, I love Little Rock when she has her hair up like that. It has her hair up, bro. Oh my god, it looks so cute. Like I said, I, I was a guy preferred over her normal hairstyle. Yeah, I think it just looks a little bit better in my personal opinion. But yeah, Best Girl looks amazing. She's cute. I love that hairstyle. Anyway, anyway. I had to do y'all though. I had to talk about Best Girl real quick before we talk about the rest of this. I just had to talk about Best Girl because I love that fucking hairstyle she has with her hair up. And I just, it's just, it suits her so good. It's so fucking cute. Anyway, anyway. And help me gushing and sipping over Best Girl Little Rock. Let us continue. So, Sarah, Uraraka, and and Sue are all here at the are he, all here at the training grounds, and all my has asked him, or I guess Izuku, have asked them to help him with controlling Black Whip. And for some reason, they just start finishing each other's sentences, like that trio from Baki season three, where Sarah says so, Uraraka says what should we do? And Sarah has, and Sarah says Black Whip, but you already know how to use that power, and. Of course, he also asked him about Izuku's hair because for some reason, my boy is rocking an afro. I don't know why, but somebody give my boy a pick. He needs a pick to pick that hair out. <laughs> that's probably the blackest statement I've ever made, bro. <laughs> my entire time on YouTube, that's probably the blackest statement I've ever made. <laughs> anyway, so he explains that the reason why his hair is all fuzzy or whatever is <laughs> because he's been training with Bakugo and because he couldn't catch him at all, I guess Bakugo kept throwing his explosions near his hair, which caused his hair to look like an afro. That seems, that's basically the basic just why it's like that. Uraraka, of course, starts freaking out. Like, there's nothing in the rules about explosion. Dek Bakugo, you're reading mean as always. And then Bakugo screaming his head off. He's like, that is the one who wanted to do in the real battle, you know? And for some reason, uh, in the background, you can see Bakugo and Sue are fighting. For, for some reason, I, I don't know why. I don't know if they're fighting because of, you know, she thinks he, he was going too hard on Izuku, or they're fighting over the water bottle in his head. Like, I don't know why they're fighting. It's so weird. Also, one thing I was speaking of, so I got to mention this real quick. Um, the re they mentioned, uh, I believe it was Izuku mentioned that they, or may have been All Might, said that the reason why those three in particular were brought in was because they all correspond similar to Black Whip, which 
I get Bracero because the tape and rock because of you know zero gravity. Of course, she has those like like the she has like those um, grapple hook things in her in her in her gaunt, in her uh, gauntlets now. But why is Sue here? I'm assuming he's talking about like her tongue because that's about the only quirk that's the only the only part of her quirk that has any resemblance resemblance to Black Whip. Other than that, I have no idea why she's here. <laughs> anyway, anyway. So, uh, Uderak, of course, tells him that, um, that she only just recently learned, that she just recently only learned about her, about her grapple hooks. Saros asks him, wouldn't that Ayazawa would be a better te teacher than that? And All Might says that he wants Uderaka to teach him how to control his body while in midair. And, oh my god, this, this shot was so cute when she kind of, like, comes out from the bottom, looking at All Might, bro, that, that shit was so fucking cute, bro. Ugh, love Uderaka. But anyway, before I start sipping on her again. Anyway, so they both, so he's, Uraka says that Deku's always jumping around like a, like in midair though. Uh, Sue comes in there, says he's hopping like a bunny, and that he needs to be, and that with this increase in power, he also needs to stay in air, in the air for longer. He needs to be able to move more freely, even in air. And of course, and then he tells Sarah that Ayazawa is very busy. We then get, which gives us a flashback to season five, when Sarah, when, uh, uh, Ayazawa and President Mai, of course, met Kurogiri. Man, that episode was something special. That episode was something else, man. That's probably one of the, that's probably also one of my favorite episodes of the entire series, bro, was that episode, man. Fucking incredible. We're back with Izuku and the others. He says that he's, yeah, he's written down Uraka and Mr. Aizawa's moves so he knows what they are. And, of course, asks if there's any, if it would help that, if there's anything you could share about how it feels. Uraka then floats in the air, saying, imagine you're swimming in air. And, and back, and back. And balance yourself and balance your arms and legs. Izuku starts to get the hang of it, and then starts using air force and just basically starts ping ponging himself all over the all over all over the place. And Uro's like, "Oh, that's pretty good." And then right before he heads over to his back with Bakugo, uh, All Might tells Izuku to like get some coaching for Black while he's up there. So then he so then All Might goes over to Izuku to Bakugo rather. And bro, <laughs> the way Bakugo is sitting, bro, man's all slouched in there. He got his legs fully extended out, hands in his pocket, both of his mouths is covered up by the little. Turtleneck thing he's got that are on the gym that are on the winter version of the gym uniforms, bro. Like, bro, Bakugo's sitting, bro. Bakugo just sitting there, bro. That is a mood right there. Just Bakugo just sitting there, bro. <laughs> anyway, uh, All Might tells him that float is, is a quirk that lets you stop midair and that's a lot like Sir Gravity before he takes a seat. And first off, first off, I fucking love this scene. This is probably this and probably the ending of the episode, probably my two favorite parts of the episode. Uh, but first, I guess, like, can we just take a moment to just talk about the complete contrast in the way Bakugo and All Might sit? Like, I've already mentioned how Bakugo sits with his hands in his pockets and everything. But, like, All Might, you know, his legs are together, his back is straight, hands all stuff. Like, he's very prim and proper, sits properly, while Bakugo's all slouched over. I just thought that was funny, just the complete contrast in the way they sit. And Bakugo tells him, I don't think you'll be able to hold that, you'll be able to explain things away much longer. It's different when he just had superpower. You won't be able to hide this. All Might tells him that, you, that they won't show any other, they won't show anyone, uh, anyone other than, uh, anyone, uh, any other powers but Black Whip. But it looks like, I mean, it looks like he's going to be showing them, you know, the fact that he can fly now with this scene, with the ending of the episode. And who knows, with the rest of how bad the, the series has been, who knows? They'll probably end up seeing the other, like, six, the other five quirks, or how many, any more, many more quirks that are in one for all as the series progresses on. We'll have to wait and see on that, but, yeah. So it seems like he won't even be able to, oh, I won't be able to keep those secrets once they're in the heat of battle, but we will have to wait and see on that. Anyway. Anyway, All Might says he'll have him learn enough to keep him to keep him going to keep him going out of control of last which I'm assuming he's referring to when Black Whip was going ape shit uh, during the uh, during season five with uh, Class A versus Class B. I believe is I'm, I'm believing that's what he, All Might is referring to. He continues. You also he continues. You also understood that night, the reality of being able to share great power with others is that you is that good to think carefully about how about how that could put others at risk. It's not only evil people who want power. And then. We get to Bakugo, and like, oh my god, I, this, uh, 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 this is probably where I'm going to discuss this most of my video, my videos going to talk, because I'm good, because the discussion video I'm planning on doing is probably going to be just going over Bakugo's overall growth, man, because Bakugo's gone through a lot of growth, a lot of character development as a series of progressed man, and it's just been fantastic to watch, man. Anyway, he says that, oh, that Izuku trusts him completely, but the description of the fourth user doesn't seem complete. We then see the notebook where it seems like where where the where I'm assuming the fourth user is supposed to be, where it's highlighted, uh, is completely blacked out, completely redacted for some reason. And even and it says even the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh all had dead, all had details on their on, on their death rates. And of course, Bakugo asks him why. And he says, when I asked you about it last time, you hesitated, right? Do you know? Do you, do you was it because you realized something about one for all? And Albert says that he doesn't, that he hasn't, that he doesn't know yet, and that he can't search something he doesn't know. 
and it's because he's concerned about the young man, like you are. And and then Baco says at the root of it, he does not he doesn't think about himself. I'm sure he's always been like that. And still and he's and he's still like that now when he can when he can do more. And then we finally learn, we finally understand the the curtain has been pulled over, and we figure out and we find out rather, we find out why Baco bullied Izuku for so long. That always felt weird to me and made me want to stay away from him. But I could understand my own weakness, so I put those odds aside and break. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we finally learned why Bakugo bullies Izuku. From because he just because he just freaked him out. <laughs> he didn't understand. He didn't understand why he was the way he was, and he couldn't understand his own weakness. And he put those out of the eyes, which usually is the typical case for bullying, just because they got their own issues and they're just projecting it onto others. So it seems like Bakugo was not immune to this fact as well. Anyway, anyway, he continues. So part of why you're, or rather, all my says. So part of why you faithfully came to help and practice was to atone for that. Am I right? I, th I don't think Young Midori feels that way, though. When I said you were like Endeavor, it was because of change. Which, yes, I, we can, I think we can all agree on that. The great character development for both Bakugo and Endeavor have been incredible. Funny enough, people who have loved Bakugo's de development, but yet yeah, everyone's been trying to cancel Horikoshi for, for giving Endeavor character development, but whatever, I'm not going yeah. I've rant, I've to... I've, ta I've ranted about that before in previous reviews. I've already said my piece on that shit. Fucking stupid. I don't know why people. I don't know why people are sending mangas death threats over fucking character development. But whatever the case may be, whatever the case may be, I definitely agree with all my right here. And easily, probably Bakugo and Endeavor, are probably some of the best written characters in the entire series. Man, their character development has been just absolutely insane. Man, I just love the growth of both these characters have gone through since you know the beginning of the series. And All Might says he couldn't look at the path until he ended up like this. And he says, I'm sure you'll have another chance to talk things over with him. But I'm not one to talk. And that's when he can finally get back to the present. Bach goes in rage as he's goes fighting and as as he's goes continuing to fight Shigaraki. Uh, I'll probably go more into this scene and obviously overall Bakko's character development in my separate character in my separate uh, episode discussion, which hopefully will be dropping sometime next week. I don't know. I got class this week and don't sound like I got spring break a fall break to, to, to lean back on, but hopefully I'll be able to get these hopefully I'll be able to get that video out for you guys before or at least on the day of when the next episode drops. So yeah, but yeah, I'll go more into detail about that there. I'm a Bakos character development, and yeah, fucking love that scene. Anyway, and one other thing before we jump right back in, I gotta talk about the music, bro. The music, once again, in this episode was fantastic. Especially the music that was playing during this scene between All Might and Bakko, and a bit earlier on between Shigaraki and Bak and Shigaraki and Izuku's fight with the piano, with the piano, please. Both, oh my god, both were amazing tracks, man. Like I said, I know I've been gushing about the OST, not these all these reviews, man, but it, it made repeat, man. The OST of season six has been absolutely fucking incredible, man. And Shigaraki's been able to endure Izuku's power of 100%, but Izuku's knows that it's like, taking longer to heal and that he is indeed taking damage. So Izuku's got to keep up the pressure. He mentions, of course, his left arm has been busted uh, from the two attacks 20 percent he's in, but All for One has the power that's been passed down to defeat All for One. Shigaraki has All for One's quirk, so he has to stop him no matter what happens to his body. Hits him with another smash, which I'm assuming was also at 100%. And we actually, this I thought was pretty nice. They, we get a quick flash of back to season two when the doctor told him that, hey, if he keeps injuring his arms like the way he's been doing it, he'll, he'll, he'll probably he'll probably no longer have use for them. So I thought that was a nice, I thought that was a nice little touch to remind us what happened back in season two, remind us how fucked easy his arms are, and the reason that he cannot, that he cannot keep doing this if he, without suffering major consequence. I thought that was a nice to really just add on to the stakes of this battle. Um, how of the stakes of Izuku possibly losing the ability to use his arm if he keeps hitting Shigaraki with 100% of one fall, but obviously he's gotta to defeat him. So the next attack he hits is a Wyoming smash, another random ass state. <laughs> but anyway, literally this one though is literally just Buzz Lightyear's karate chop action. <laughs> literally just starts karate chopping Shigaraki, and Shigaraki says that I'm taking damage faster than I can heal. He'll He'll keep, he'll get me, he'll get me if I don't focus on defense. He then hits him with another St. Louis smash. By the way, the animation, fantastic. I've been loving the look, I love the look of these, these smashes. So then, Iz so then, uh, Shigaraki tries to use his repulsor blast against Izuku. And then Izuku hits him with the Texas smash. Yes, Texas, the biggest state of them all. So I'm sure this was a, this, this is, was a very devastating blow to Shigaraki. And Shigaraki, he is like, bro, what is this kid on? I don't want this smoke. <laughs> There's gotta be a cork to stop this kid. Find it. 
then we're back with Baku and the others, and he says that at this rate he'll lose. He's using his legs and Air Force to con and control multiple courts and works. He's using everything he's learned right in the shop of Shikaraki since he didn't feed him with the first attack. Now they're just chipping at each other, just seeing who lasts longer. And with a going up against a guy with regeneration, yeah, Itsuku's probably gonna lose that fight. And so, this. This I thought. This I thought. Well, this thing was fucking awesome, bro. This is. Oh my god. I fucking love this episode. Bro. This episode's so good. So then, Baku says in a few minutes his power has been stolen and turned to dust. And this is when my man starts barking orders. Yes, Bakugo becomes a leader. He starts barking orders to everyone to save Izuku. I can't believe I just said that, bro. Bakugo is trying to save Izuku, bro. Character development, boys. It's glorious. You love to see it. <laughs> I fucking love this episode, bro. He asks Todoroki if he's done with the first aid, and they say, and he's like, oh yeah, but he's like, shut up and grab a hold of me. And then he says, and then he tells Endeavor that we'll use his heat to get him to get us up into the air, and he tells Todoroki to keep him different cool for as long as possible. And he says, Endeavor says, yo, you want me to finish him off with one blow? He's like, all right. So Shigaraki, so I, I don't know if you said Shigaraki, to, uh, Bakugo grabs onto Endeavor while he, well, uh, you have Todoroki behind him with his head on his on his back. I'm surprised he just like put ice on him, but he's just got like using like kind of this either way. I'm sure. It's calling it regardless so they just so they start jumping up in the air and charging right towards them and and never tells them that once he once it black is fully extended and he's got a lot and he's got Bak and he's got to, uh, shigaraki in to tell us and the others to get out there as soon as possible and so then he said then we get then we get this amazing shot oh my god i love this shot bro i love this shot where we see the scene from season one when like this was like I'm pretty sure this was like all of the first episode when um Shigeru, when Bakugo was bullying Izuku and he says like oh you'll never you'll die in the exams you know that whole scene we see we seen that scene from Izuku's perspective while he's like laying on the while he's like on the ground looking up at Bakugo and everybody all they all look like demons or whatever but now we get to see it from Bakugo's point of view from Bakugo's perspective oh that was oh, oh chef's kiss bro this was incredible so as I was saying, even if all for one was a, was a is a cursed power, all for one is. And bro, 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 bro you'll see my reaction. Bro. I was, I was like, what is he gonna say? What is he gonna say? I was just on the edge of my seat wondering what Bakugo was gonna say. <laughs> anyway, we get another flashback back to when Izuku and Bakugo were kids watching a TV, seeing All Might, you know, doing all my things. We get back another flashback to season one when Izuku, when Izuku declared that ba that Deku isn't going to be useless anymore, and he says, "My Deku is you, it means you can do it." And we, and I. I love that they cut back to Izuku as he's fighting Shigaraki, bro. Oh my god. <laughs> season, bro. This season has been too good, bro. Bones, bro. Y'all, you, 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 y'all spoiling us, bro. You are spoiling us, Bones. This is too good. We are not worthy of this god tier animation. This god tier product you have, you have bestowed upon us. We are not worthy of this peak fiction you have given us, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Uh, bro, this episode's so bad. Also, the OST, once again. The, oh my god. The OST, once again, bro. Banger, fantastic, brilliant. So, they get up to Shigaraki and the others. Sh uh, uh, Todoroki, not Todoroki. I is out. I don't know what you say. Everyone else says, but Endeavor. Endeavor manages to lock him in the mass law, and then he just screams out, "Plus Ultra Prominence Burn!" And bro, this man burns Shigaraki. He burns this man to a fucking crisp. This dude's so black, he's darker than my dad's skin tone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro, I'm losing my goddamn mind reviewing this episode, man. Y'all can tell how much I love this episode. Anyway, as Shigaraki is screaming, his head off, burning to a crisp, we see All for One's hand extend out to Shigaraki, to, uh, uh, telling him to let him take control. And then the, 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 the screen just turns off like a TV. I was like, what the fuck? Did, did, did my TV just turn off or something? <laughs> I was like, what the fuck just happened? And then once we cut back, we see these like these like lions or like these like tentacles whatever the fuck you want to call them protruding out endeavors back which i think we saw all for one using these in season three i can't remember for certain but i think we saw all for one use them either way all for one is now in control of shigaraki's body and endeavor like all of us is questioning how the hell this man isn't dead yet and then we see shigaraki's body and like i said man is burnt to a crisp there are no eyes there are no skin there are no hair there's nothing just black just black now black body that's been burnt to a crisp and then we see him stretch his arm out to izuku a little brother all for one says and then we get one of the greatest this bro this is well this is one of the greatest callbacks i've ever seen in anime where bakugo charges in and says in that instant i didn't think we get flashback back to season one 
to when ba when Izuku saved Baku and when he when he did his leak and he just ran towards Baku to save him in that instant. But yeah, another flashback to see once again to season one when Bakugo and Tor and and, Shiger, and, and, uh, and Izuku were kids and you know Izuku extended his hand had his hand out to Baku saying, "Hey, are you all right? Can you stand?" You know. But this time once again we see from Baku's perspective, man. Oh, I loved it, man. I love it. I love it. And then my and then we see Bakugo, curb Bakugo, to reach out to grab Izuku's hand. My body just moved on its own, and then we see Bakugo took the attack. Title card finally pops up, Katsuki Bakugo rising, and then we go to the goddamn credits! Oh, I was pissed off at that, though. I was pissed off at the episode ended here, bro. I was pissed off that that's where the credits were, bro. But, and then once again, they change up the EV once again, where it looks like we see Izuku stretching his hand out to Kid Baka, and, put, and Kid Baka is actually happy for once, actually smiling and like, like, and like ready to take his, ready to take his hand. And then we cut to another shot of Baka, of, of young Izuku with current Bakugo, uh, sad as he, once again, sends his hand out to Izuku. Thought that was thought that was thought that was incredible, amazing, and I love that it was a nice little callback to one of the manga volume covers, which also had a similar shot of Bakugo of Kern Bakugo having his hand reached out to him by Young Izuku. Thought that was a nice little callback to that manga cover. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that's where the episode ends. We get another banger, amazing shot. Also, by the way, somehow Shigaraki regrew his hair, and the new, and next episode preview somehow has his hair back. Anyway, we see this amazing shot, of Izuku, which I have to see the manga panel version of it for. Looks amazing by Bones, man. And yeah, it looks like we're gonna be seeing like a bit of a battle, internal battle between Shigaraki all for one and his grandma. So that's going to be incredible. Man. Obviously, once again, y'all are gonna get the reaction to that episode as well. And yeah, I can't wait to watch this episode with the dub cast man when that eventually drops. Can't wait to see how Clifford handles these scenes, man. It's gonna be amazing. Justin Briner as well with the Izuku Bro. It's gonna be fucking insane, bro. So yeah, that is the end of the review. That is the end of the episode, bro. That I have said out my piece. Once again, I'm going to be doing a separate discussions video for this episode, going over Bakugo's character development, and of course, bringing and of course comparing it to another Marvel slash DC character, as I always do, man. I'll, I won't say who. I'll let y'all wait till the actual video drops for you guys to know who and who I picked. But yeah, you, but I think most, of, I think some of you guys can probably guess, might be able to guess who it is. If you want to guess, please leave in the comments which character you think I'm going to pick from Marvel or DC's uh, pool of characters. But yeah, man, I can't wait to get started working on that video. I can't wait to see the next episode, man. And bro, season six has just been incredible, man. This season has been absolutely insane. And I can't wait to see more of it, man. I can't wait for the next episode. Anyway, guys, my final verdict, of course, to the surprise of nobody, it's a 10! <laughs> Out of fucking 10, ladies and gentlemen. As always, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like if you did, subscribe if you're new. Follow me on, uh, follow me on my socials if you feel like it. Links down in the description box below. And as always, come back for more. See you guys next time.